Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I achieved this child's eye and eyebrow study. Be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so we can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. I'm right, doing this a free hand, so I'm just putting a centre point. So I work from a centre point using imaginary angles to get a location of each sort of area. Keeping it nice and loose, so I'm holding the pencil quite a distance away from the point there. So keeping it nice and sort of uh, free flowing. Uh, the pencil I'm using is a 708 Carbothello pencil and the surface is pastel matte dark grey. The centre point method I developed from using a grid, so you can start off with like a 1 inch grid, 2 inch grid, 3 inch and then a quarter grid and then you're just left with a centre point and you do the same on the reference obviously so you just you know feeling your way through just using imaginary angles comparing one shape against another I'm using a Faber-Castell needle eraser there which actually sculptures the areas into the correct position just going through quickly the colours, the skin tone colours, uh, the dark shadow colours, uh, the iris, the white of the eyes, and that's a selection of them together. Just adding a few lights to start with, and then the darks. It's just the purpose of this underdrawing is to correct the outline, make sure the shapes are right and everything's in the right position. Um, and also what it does as well, it sort of adds pigment to the pastel mat which creates like a vehicle so when you put the richer colours on it goes on smoother without any sort of too much grain. I always tend to use like brown and blue for the darks rather than use a black for the underdrawing. I'm not concerned as well getting the values right or the chroma or the colours, it's just a basic idea of what's needed and just getting those shapes in, that's all I'm interested in. Um, getting a basic feel for it, just creating a little bit of form. You can play a little bit and just to see what colours might be needed. The skin tones I'm using yellow ochre, warm red and then if I need to desaturate that red or create a shadow I'm adding the complementary colour which is green which creates that natural subtlety. Now because it's a greeny blue eye I'm just adding that little lemon yellow to the blue just to create a zinginess just for the basic under drawing and then using burnt sienna around the pupil there so just basically just putting these sort of colours in ready for when I start putting the rich colours and the details in. Adding white there just to create a few tones more pressure when it's lighter less pressure when it's sort of mid-tone tend to work on different areas all the time and just letting my instincts take over so sometimes I'll be on the eye then I'll go into the skin uh, but it's just basically get the overall feeling there here I'm working on the sort of shadows and mid-tones uh, just placing that pigment down the yellow ochre and red and also the green for the desaturation for the shadows and then working it in with the white uh, creating sort of that texture and then just keep glazing over the top um, it's just getting a sort of some pigment down and just keep playing around with it uh, like I say it's just basically getting that sort of form together uh, getting everything in place and it'll give me an idea then of what to do when I start putting the rich colours in it's a great opportunity as well with this stage is to become freer and more sort of relaxed and just enjoy moving these shapes around without worrying about sort of the value and the chroma and everything all at once so one stage at a time and just play and enjoy it it's all about having fun at the end of the day there's a little bit of real time just to show you how i'm using the white i'm sort of going small circles different sort of shapes it just creates that texture but i just let it be spontaneous and just let it sort of flow from me really uh, i don't overthink things i just let it happen if you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. There's a selection of Karen Dash pre-mixed flesh tones. And there's the colours I used previously with additional black. 
Now the rich color stage then is all about getting that sort of value right, the chroma. So I'm putting the highlights in. This is the lightest part of the study using the Faber-Castell white, which is really fresh as well for that area. And then just putting the sort of black uh, into the dark part of the iris there. The eyelid, I'm using the pink white because it's quite fresh and then just glazing over then with the red blue and then I'm adding a little bit of yellow in, in places. So I'm making like a purpley red color and then sort of making it sort of glow a little bit in the corner there by adding the lemon yellow. Now here I'm using black again and then what I'll do is go over them with a the green. So you're just not just putting black in there, you're mixing something with it and then just mixing in the blue as well. So sometimes it's more blue than green. So you have to play about with these things, but you can make things greener by adding this lemon yellow. So you don't have to use the green pencil. You can just mix your own, you see, just adding that lemon yellow there. And so putting the marks in. Um, it's just a case of just playing about. This is still a blocking at this point uh, because I don't try and put too much detail in because that's for the later part of this video, which is the detail stage, because there's no point putting loads of details in if the colours are not correct. Now the white of the eye there, I'm using blue and orange to start with and then adding that cold red to make it into a purple. So you just got to keep playing about, just moving the colours around and just seeing what works really. Here's a handy tool to have in your kit, it's a colour shaper. Just dabbing with that, uh, don't press on too much, and it just moves things around a little bit. Uh, it just helps you to sort of blend in those sort of tight areas. Instead of selecting a purple pencil, I'm mixing it by adding the blue, the cold red together, and then the white, and then adding that blue and orange in places just to vary the sort of tones of it. I'm using blue and orange here to create natural sort of shadows of the blue. Burnt sienna for around the pupil there, and then just giving it a little bit of zinginess by adding that lemon yellow. Now I'm going to use the white here just to map it out, so I'm not really concerned about the colour or anything, I'm just using the white to create a similar sort of tint. But I always do it a little bit lighter because when I put the colour on the top it creates the right tone then. So you have to think ahead a little um, and making it a little bit lighter so when you do glaze it becomes the right shade. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends. It would mean so much to me because this would help the channel to grow. I tend to move around a lot, so one minute I'll be working on the darks, next minute on the lights. I'm trying to get a balance up overall, so I'm, I'm keeping aware. I just open my heart, let go of the mind and let that reference image come into me rather than me going outside of myself focusing too much on that reference image because it makes things quite tight. The more you can send this open heart feeling to the reference image, the more comes back, the more the energy of the person, even this is a study, but there's still the energy of the, the boy here uh, that's shining through the skin and the eyes. So I'm focusing on that and connecting to that and letting that flow through me out of my hands. See, I'm planning it out here as well. There's some areas here looks a bit yellow, but it's just getting that sort of foundation of the colour, then what I'll do is I'll put the, the pinker colours over the top of that and then that yellowish colour will shine through. It's just a process, you have to keep building it up. Uh, so sometimes you have to leave an area, uh, what you're working on, even though it's not finished, um, just so you can sort of get the overall feel and then get back to it then and put more finesse to it. Just like to take this opportunity to thank all my Patreons for their wonderful support every month. Can't thank you enough. If you're interested in joining Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, most of the videos I'm putting on now is all in real time, audio and video, where you can see every part and I discuss the way I'm doing it, as I'm doing it, in the here and now as you see it on the video so if you're interested in that please check out the link in the description below uh, to find out for more details just laying a few eyelashes in here to start with just give an idea of, of what that sort of area 
And then what I'll do then is prepare underneath ready for the eyelashes to go on the top. Now for the shadow areas of the skin tone there, I'm using dark green and warm red in this instance. This desaturates the red you see and it creates a natural shadow um, and subtleties so you can have a little bit greeny or pinky or redder. Um, and then add in that white to, to sort of change it up again. Just getting a basic uh, sort of idea of where these eyelashes go. What I did here, I just added a few in there, just to give me an idea, then I had a little break from it. So best to do that, sort of take it in stages. Just let your instincts guide you, because a change is as good as a rest, as I say. So sometimes it's good to sort of go to a different area, then come back all afresh, then when and to do the eyelashes. So that's what I did here. Now you open your eyes to see the colour, squint your eyes to see the value. Now this area is a little bit purpley, bluey colour. So that's what I've done here, just put that sort of blue and red over there and then just work it in to what I've already done. Now for the detail stage then, so what I'm doing here is just mapping out the eyebrows here with a brown, just keep it basic and simple really, just two colours, brown and white, just get everything in position then you can actually subtle it all up then. Now to get the details I'm using the edge of the point so I'm a shave for the point with a knife and then just keep turning the pencil to find a new edge and that's the easiest way I've found to do it rather than trying to sharpen it to a really fine point because it just breaks off anyway. Now my approach now and my technique is more sort of um, spontaneous and more suggestive or impressionistic so it's it's not hyper realism so I'm not trying to get every highbrow hair the same as what the reference image is it's my take on it or my interpretation of it and that keeps you sort of relaxed so that, you know I find that if you just just find a similar sort of pattern so you don't lose your way um, but just sort of relax and just let it happen really and just don't sort of get too intense about making it exactly the same. Um, it keeps it all sort of fresh and spontaneous then. Right, slowing it down to real time now so you can see how I'm putting these eyelashes in. Uh, taking it really steady, uh, trying to feel my way and trying to get the balance of them. So like I say, I'm trying to get a similar pattern but I'm not trying to get it exact. Uh, but sort of varying the pressure, so it's more pressure and then lighter as the high eyelash goes to sort of a point. Now the eyelash seems to curve at the start of it and then goes to a point, so it's curving over the iris here. So that's what I'm trying to achieve, that sort of natural look to it. And you can see me approach here, I'm not just sort of drawing them in, I'm just taking it really steady and feeling my way and, and just getting that sort of balance. So before I make a decision, I'm just sort of plan it and look at the hole. And then once I'm happy where I feel it's gonna be, then I put the mark in. Now for the eyelashes at the bottom here. So I'm just preparing my way first, getting all the colors right underneath and everything before I start putting these eyelashes on for the under part of the eye. Now you've got to look at the temperatures rather, there's some warmer areas of the skin tone and some cooler areas. So when it's cooler, just add in that blue to create a purpley red colour to it. And then here underneath the eye, I'm using a purple actually because it's quite a nice fresh uh, colour from Caran Dash. Uh, it just helps with the look of it. I'm using Faber-Castell white because it's fresher to create these sort of highlights here. And creating a little bit of texture by spotting it and swiggles and just feeling your way for the sort of texture of the skin. Now the eyelashes here I'm doing with brown because it's very sort of light colour, not as black as the top eyelashes. And just taking my time, letting it scrape across the pastel mat so I'm not pressing on at all. You have to be really careful not to press on too much because it will sort of um, create too much of like a caterpillar you know effect so very very light pressure can't uh, stress that en enough now here i'm showing you how i'm sharpening it just turning the pencil and chafing it uh, to a point on the lead part of it so i'm 
just keep doing that keep turning it ever so often just to get a new edge and I'm using the side of the pencil to create that fine line and again I'm using imaginary angles to draw this so it's just like drawing the outline I'm using angles comparing one area to another to find the location and then just to tint it I'm just adding this titanium white from the Carbothello and it just subtles it up a little bit now I have got a free class for you if you wish to have it it's uh, talks about how I create shadows using the complementary colors and it applies to anything you'd paint or draw and it goes for any medium you use oils watercolor and so on but the link is in the description below if you're interested in it it's there for you and it's completely free now this part of the drawing I'm constantly looking in the mirror so I'm turning my back to the actual study putting the mirror in front of me and seeing the reflection over my shoulder and it gives you a flip image of it and so you can see what needs to be done it sort of brings out the imperfections if you like so it's a good idea to do that uh, and just keep checking uh, you can take a photograph with your mobile phone and see how it looks on that as well uh, I'm tending to use a cotton bud now to blend now and again but I'm putting a very light pressure on it because I don't want to let go of that sort of texture so once you've gone over it it's best to put that texture back in again because skin tone isn't plastic looking so when you're using these blender tools it can look a bit plasticky so I tend to go over it again and put the texture in there but finally now whether looking in the mirror I notice that I need a little bit more light in between these sort of eyebrow hairs so I added that in and just going around generally just adding little bits of touches of highlights here and and sort of making things a little bit finer here like on the eyelashes here it's a case of just getting that overall balance when you put in these final details in I'm aware of the edges so some edges are softer and some are sharper the temperature as well and the overall values and chroma so I'm looking at the, all that as a whole thank you so much for watching the video right till the end I hope you enjoyed it if there's any questions at all please leave a message in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can but if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends it would mean so much to me as this will help the channel and in the meantime if you want to watch any more of my work please check out this video here Take care. Bye.